when we tell you to get to go over, when we tell you to get to go over, this is why you get to go over. This is why you, yeah, nah, but this is why you get thrown over, bro. Ooh. Let's go, boy! Yeah. Let's go. Let's go. Corey in the building. My man, welcome to the channel, my guy. I, I appreciate you, man, uh, giving me the opportunity to talk to you and you sharing your story of uh, what happened man but let's uh, let's get some particulars out the way man ohio where you from bro originally look i as much as i like the area i can't claim ohio i was raised in eastern north carolina like i'm true to my roots but i live in napoleon right now it's you know it's not bad but man i miss my south boy i won't lie to you okay okay napoleon ohio i'm out of cleveland ohio so yeah man we you you Straight east from me. I was out that way not long ago, uh, West Salem. Okay, that's what's up, man. Yeah. That's what's up. Yeah. All right, so let's let's get into it, man, because what happened to you was kind of tragic, man, and and it goes to show you that a lot of people really don't be paying attention when they see road work or roadside helping helping not just drivers but emergency personnel. Period that we need to get over or why we see Absolutely. stuff like that, man. So take us back to, to, to what happened that day, man. I mean, honestly, man, it all, it was first thing in the morning, bro. I get there at six 30 in the morning. It's just, you know, it's a normal day. I come in, Hey, you got a roll call waiting. Perfect. Get changed out, get loaded up, you know, I'm driving down. It's, Two miles from the shop, quick little steer tire, you know, get the day rolling. Is what it is. I, it was normal on from there, man. I got to it, you know, pulled up, got to work, got my info from the truck driver and was standing there, you know, talking to the truck driver. And next thing I know, man, I hear it. air horns real quick. I hear tire squeal ever so slightly. And then he must have, he must have hit the trailer first because the truck kind of, you know, lurched forward real quick. And my first thought, I don't know if you've had a steer tire blow, but, you know, you can't really get the jack under the axle. So it was kind of a sketchy jacking situation. I'm like, oh, Lord, here we go. Truck's rolling off. I went to tuck, and about time I tucked, the tractors collided. And, man, that thing flew into the drive, the service truck. He kept on going. He kept rolling, you know. His tanks ruptured and exploded. Like, I've told many people since, it was like watching a movie with no TV on. So it was another semi that collided into the yes, truck that you was working on? Yes, sir. I recently got a, uh, another video that I posted uh, today of the driver, the truck that hit us. But yeah, it was a tanker driver. He he was hauling diesel fuel. So after he hit the, the, the truck, he kept on going and then it exploded down the street? I don't think it was a kept on going, like trying to, you know, hit and run situation, but just with the momentum of everything, yeah, the <laughs> truck kept rolling. Like it kept going down the road down the highway a little bit more yeah i mean he rolled probably a good eighth mile just with all the momentum and everything rolling man like it was it was crazy i've never seen anything like it before in my life so what do you suppose what do you suppose what happened what why why the driver was so distracted what he just didn't see y'all he 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 lost control did he get a did he get a blowout like what happened oh that I, I heard the words I was told from him where he said, man, I don't even know what happened. And I believe it because, you know, things happen so fast out there on that highway, man. You know, you, you don't know what could happen. I mean, that's part of the, you know, as much as I hate to say it, it's part of the job, you know, going out there and doing that roadside work. It was scary, but I know that's a risk we take every time we step out that truck. Just like y'all drivers. Every time you hop in that truck, you might not make it home, man. You might not come back. But I, he, we don't really know. I haven't got a direct answer of what exactly happened. Um, I've heard from a couple people, a car may have came across the median from the westbound direction, which I saw no car involved anywhere. So I don't know where that car went to. Um, I've heard he swerved into us, you know, trying to avoid a car in the left lane, but I was on the ditch side. I, I saw nothing. I saw a white freight liner trying to jump up in my lap. That's, that's about it. It was a good thing that you wasn't like up under the truck 
near the truck because yes, because after looking at the aftermath, you you could have got seriously hurt. Like where were you? Like oh, oh, when yeah. you what you you instantly heard the truck coming and colliding, and you just just jumped up and got out of the way, right? Bro, it was fight or flight. I mean, I I was at the at the steer tire jacking it up. I mean, I had my hand on the jack, lowering the the leaf spring itself down onto the jack stand to readjust to get onto the steer axle. I mean, I was right there. I mean, I like I said, it was fight or flight. I heard that I heard that air horn hit and something. Something inside me said move, and I didn't ask questions why. I I rolled. Where was the Where was the driver of 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 the, of the damaged truck? Like where Where was he at? He was uh he was standing down. He was standing probably about three feet away from me, closer to my service truck in the ditch a little bit. We were just you know we were just we were talking, man. It was you know he was a cool guy, and if you know usually if a driver wants to conversate and they'll safely stay in the ditch, you know I don't mind. That's fine. You want to talk? That's makes my job go by quicker you know that's completely fine and thankfully he was because man if he'd have been sitting in that driver's seat it probably wouldn't he wouldn't have walked away as smoothly as we all did because you saw i know you saw the video that driver's seat was that driver's side was tore up yeah it it really was it it, it was not a good yeah, look man, it, was, it was not a good look man and thankfully thankfully we all walked away relatively unscathed i mean i got a couple scrapes and bruises but I'm talking to you, so it can't be that bad. Hey, and I I appreciate it, and I'm glad that yeah. everything everything worked out. Well, praise the Lord for that one, man. What about the driver you know, that caused the accident after the troopers came there? Did they do some type of sobriety test on them or something like that, or not? In my not to my eyes, but I was. Um... By the time they were really talking to him, because, you know, in them kind of situations, I've learned they want to keep everybody kind of separate. So I was in the back of the ambulance getting looked at, like, by the time they were talking to him. So I'm not sure. I don't know. I really think the poor man was just shook up. I mean, he probably thought he killed somebody. Because I'm sure he, I, I don't know what went through that man's brain. I honestly, I can't imagine how that man feels this morning. Was he an owner operator or was he a company driver? I believe he was a company driver because the uh, the truck it was you know it was leased it was a leased truck but I'm not sure if he personally was leased or what the what the deal was with all that but now was, what about what about the driver you was helping out I'm assuming he was a flatbed or was that a flatbed truck you was working on Yes sir yeah he was yeah it was a flatbed he was hauling pallets um actually the company is based out of Fort Wayne. The really, I just, if you don't mind, I have to holler them out real quick. Go ahead. Because they are some of the nicest people I've ever met, man. I believe it's Morphus Trucking. They're out of like Glable, Indiana. Man, they, the wife's owner or the owner's wife, the owner himself, the dispatcher have all messaged me, whether it's Messenger or TikTok, made sure I was okay, asked me how I was doing. I spoke to the owner directly yesterday at the seed and nicest man you'll ever meet. I mean, I just, I just, I had to shout him out because, you know, with the situation, some people, some people don't keep their cool and, you know, it's easy to let it slide, but you can't, you can't blow up on things that really have no control over it. You know, I, nothing any of us could have done besides whatever the tanker driver could have done to avoid it. We can't change anything that happened. What roadside uh, company you drive for? I was about to say Loves, but oh no, no, no! You well, said no, got, no. Never mind. I'm gonna stop. That's, oh, never mind. Yeah, we won't get. We won't start with Loves. I work for the TA out here in the cold. How how long you been roadside tech for for TA? About two and a half, three years. I've been doing this, and man, it never got it's never gotten less scary, but it it definitely gets a lot more scary. I, I tell you that does does that change your perspective because well, I, I came from the roadside industry yeah. i i used to i used to own my own roadside company i went out there did tire changes and stuff like that and yeah. i know and, and i know doing tire changes on the highway it's like it's like real real scary because well, a lot of people they, they don't get over when when they see us on the side of the road and 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 that would be going through my head all the time like Man, what, what what if that happened? And and it happened. It it happened. It 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 happened to you. So now does does that change your perception of going out there doing roadside on on the highway now, or or you you got a little bit more thicker skin now? Honestly, it's kind of a fifty fifty. I've almost determined I'm gonna have to find see and find out because I don't know how I feel about it. 
some moments even throughout the day, like it hasn't felt real. And then other days, like, I don't want to compare myself to a soldier, but it's like I came home from war, man. Like, I don't know. I don't know what's what. Like, I I still, I get real anxious because, you know, I live here in town and 24 is right here by my house, man. I, I look at it all the time and driving over it this morning, it just, it didn't sit right with me. Looking down, I looked down eastbound about where I was sitting and it just, man, I got a feeling in my stomach and I've been talking to some friends and it almost might be time to become a shop princess and find myself a nice little, a little bit of tuck up in and turn some wrenches for a while. Okay. Okay. I, was I think it's, I, I don't, I don't. Was, was before the situation, uh, before the accident, what do you feel comfortable working on? Do you feel comfortable working on the passenger side or do you feel comfortable on the driver side working on the tire changes and stuff like that? I always prefer the passenger side just because of, you know, just it's a little bit safer. I mean, yeah, you're usually blinded because unless he's hauling an empty flatbed, you're not going to be able to see, you know, behind you and around you. But at least I could roll in the ditch instead of trying to run in the middle of the highway. That's that's all, especially since it's happened now. And I've had multiple people. Well, what if you've been on the left side? I wouldn't be talking to you. I'd have, I would have had nowhere to go. I would, absolutely nowhere to go. Look, we, we don't even want to think about that, bro. We we don't even. Oh want no, to, sir! We, it we didn't happen to, that way. Yeah, we we don't want to think about that, man. And that's like I said, I I get the I I had the same anxiety. I I when I get the call and I ask the, the person and say, hey, uh, what side is the the tire need changing? Oh, it's on the it's on the driver's side. Fuck. Okay, yeah, well, how far? That's how about to be done. Yeah, how how far are you over <clears throat> over to the shoulder? Because like some places, like in the city. There's virtually no oh, shoulder. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? There's, yes, sir. There's, oh, yeah. Yeah, there's virtually no shoulder. And I'd be like, well, is it bad enough? Maybe you can, like, you know, like power roll it down down the way a little bit so we can get a little bit on, in a oh, safer yeah. p- area. Do, do you suggest uh, drivers to do that as well? Like, if you get a call and it is on the driver's side or something like that do you tell the driver be like hey okay we like get it over a little bit a little bit closer to the ditch side it all de- it, it all depends man if you can safely creep creep it over just a little bit you know i'm not asking you to roll i mean if you want if you can roll to an offering by means please do like if you can hit it off that's fine i would much rather something like that even if you're going towards the off off lane, the little exit lane. Give me something, you know, give me just a little bit of space. But if it if you don't feel safe moving, don't move. That's my personal opinion. I believe that with whether it be, you know, mechanical issues, tire issues, weather, as a as a son and a nephew of truck drivers, if you don't feel safe, sit your ass right there and I'll come take care of you. I I would much rather have to be on my toes and watch my back then you go to pull out and be limping it and soccer mama playing on her cell phone and runs right into your back end because she ain't paying attention because you're trying to creep up in the right lane to get up to the exit ramp. Like if, if you can do it safely, by all means, please give us some space. Give us all the room you can, but don't don't risk yourself for anybody else trying to save me because that's just, that. in my opinion, it's just selfish. And I know we should be a little selfish about our own lives, but I can't risk other people's lives for myself. Uh, that makes me no better than the person that doesn't get in the left lane when they're going down the highway and seeing you walking down that white line. In my per- in my opinion, I'm risking just as many lives as they are. Let me let me ask you this: You've been driving for TA. You've been doing road service for a couple of years. Is 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 the pay worth it? <laughs> because you're coming out there doing some dangerous work on on busy intersections every day. So does the pay pay or is it worth it for an average person working on semis is on a grander scale? Yeah, absolutely. And like, I know what you mean. Cause you know, some people might think, Oh, I'm going to hop in a TA and compare it to like a Jiffy Lube or like a Walmart auto carry. Like, no, sir. Like, I, I don't personally think it's worth it. I don't think any amount of money is worth my life, but TA level, loves level, it ain't a bad idea if you want to learn how to work on some things. You know, you want to get in, you know, started in the diesel mechanic world and learn a thing or two. It's not bad, but it's, like I said, it's it's a risk you have to take because 
There's a lot of a lot of shops, especially you know, you know Ohio, man. If you ain't in a big city, it's little small towns everywhere. All of them shops do roadside work. Every single one of them mom and pop shops do tire calls. Cause I mean, that's how you make your money. I mean, if if ain't nobody coming through your small town, but they 30 miles down the road in the interstate, you best believe I'm going to you. <laughs> I'm coming to make my money. But if you you know, I I don't think it's worth it. Honestly, I've really I've really been thinking about it. And I think it's it's worth to go find something that I can stay in bay, and I know I can come home every day and don't have to worry about it. I I gladly work it. What's the average call for you guys? Like, was truck driver blow out? They call you up. What what's the, what's what's the average amount a truck driver had to pay for, or a company has to has to pay for you guys to come out there to to do the work? Like, what what would be the total? Because I had I had a blowout. I wasn't on a highway or anything like that. But the dude brought the steer tire and literally changed the steer tire, put the steer tire on the rim while the rim was still on the truck. And I looked at that like I I thought he had to take the rim off. I was like, whoa, I I learned something here. But as as soon as he got finished, now mind you, this is a tire, steer tire, what, about eight, about eight hundred dollars? Man, they charged yes, us. Sir, yes, sir. Yes. They they charged us a cool fifteen hundred dollars, bro. Yeah, I mean, I could tell you the rates at TAR personally. It's it's one hundred forty nine dollars an hour and like two ten a mile. I mean, it's your average. It's your average. I mean, if you you know if you're within fifteen miles of us and you buy a brand new tire. It's gonna run you about twelve, thirteen hundred dollars. It, it's it ain't cheap, and that's this is why it's not cheap. I mean, it's you know they they charge for the hazard pay. I mean, it's it's a risk we take. That's why we try to. We always advise if you can make it to the shop, man, just make it to the shop. Just come on in, you know. We'll we'll take care of you. We'll do what we can do, and we'll get you out of there. But but it's it is it's expensive. I tell you this much. I uh, it cost a man almost a thousand dollars, and all I did. Um, you drove, you know, some of the uh, coolant reservoirs, the little, the one little, mm-hmm. the little hose that comes off the top, little blue rubber hose. It had a slit in it. Mm-hmm. He could have fixed that with a pair of side cutters and a screwdriver. But I had to come out there all the way to the uh, on the turnpike out by Indiana. So you know, it was a forty-five minute drive for me, about fifty miles one way. It cost him almost a thousand dollars for me to come out there and cut that line. Ooh, man, so, I'm in, the, I'm in look, the wrong look business. At the drivers. Go buy some tools. What do you suggest again? Make make that suggestion one more time. Yeah. Buy some tools and learn how to use them. You know how much money you can save changing your own fuel filters? It's not hard. It's a fuel filter. It's a strap wrench. Put that thing around it. All right, sit off. Put your new one on. Take care of your trucks, man. That's why these people are broke down on the side of the road, and I get complained at because, well, oh, I got to pay $1,700 for this tire. Well, brother, if you checked your crap every morning when you woke up like you're supposed to, you'd have seen that thing was sitting at 40 PSI this morning, and that's why it blew. Like, it it baffles me, man, watching these drivers leave the truck lot every morning. I don't ever see a single hood up. I don't ever see light cycling. And I get it. You got stuff to do. You don't have to check every single thing every day, but at least look at your stuff. Know what you're looking at. Learn your trucks. We get so many guys in there for PMs. What kind of motor you got in your truck? I don't know. How do you not know? Like how do you how do you not know what you sit behind every single day? Would would it be fair to say that a lot of these drivers work for mega carriers or carriers that that don't want them to work on their trucks? Like Say for example, if I if I get up, well, it ain't no if. I had plenty of headlights blew out. I I went to YouTube, looked up how to change how to change a headlight. I think it was in a freight liner. Seen the video, went in there, got the bulb, stuck my hand in there, changed it out, bam, bam, boom. But the company, when I told the comp when I told the company that I did that, it was like, hey, next time call breakdown, let them know so that they can send somebody out here to change the bulb. And I'm like, it's a headlight bulb. It wasn't a big deal. I, just give me my money back for paying for the for the bulb. But these mega carriers will literally have these drivers broke down for the simplest stuff. They don't want them to work on their trucks, bro. Oh, absolutely, man. I've came out to places for mud flaps. 
And I'm like, you don't have a, a 9 16 wrench and a socket on a ratchet. You can change this yourself. Like, you know, and it's no knock to the drop. Some people just don't know how to operate tools. I get that. But like, if you cut to the, for the carriers, like, why, why would you want to waste time? Cause I know if that truck ain't loaded and rolling, it's, it's you, it's a paperweight. I mean, you're not, you're not making any money sitting in a parking lot waiting for me to get to you to change a mud flap. And then we got to sit there and wait for an EFS check and wait for somebody to get back from lunch for payment. And we sitting there for another 30, 45 minutes. And he could have been out there, wham, bam, thank you, man, rolling, gone. Because we do get drivers that come in, you know, like, hey, Red Airline ripped on me. You know, y'all sell those? Absolutely, man. Here you go. They go take care of it right in a lot by themselves. And it, it's surprising when they do because you don't see it very much anymore. And I've I've always wondered how much of it is the driver's knowledge and how much of it is, like you said, you know, they, these mega carriers, you know, they don't look at people as people anymore. They're just a truck number. Yeah, I, 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 I can assess that. I definitely can yeah. assess that. These companies, there's no loyalty to the drivers anymore no, no. there's there's no compassion to the drivers anymore is either do as i say or leave that's yep. that's the mentality of 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 these companies now they they claim they claim to treat you like family stuff like that no they treat you like a stepchild bro but but it yes, is sir. what it is, yes, man. Sir. So again, I, I appreciate you coming on and sharing your story and everything, man. And I'm glad you're here to tell it. That's Me that was a both, scary. That was, yeah, that was a scary yeah. situation, man. So what 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 would be your takeaway from everything now? My my takeaway from everything that's happened to me is you are the most important person to you. You need to worry about you at the end of the day. Are you okay? Are you safe? Are you taken care of? Because nobody else has you in mind like you should have you in mind, if that makes any sense. You, because, you know, I I was upset about this whole thing when it first happened because, you know, I was like, damn, man, I did everything I should have done. You know, cones out, I had my jack stands, yada, yada. But that didn't matter. So, I, but I still, you know, I put me first at the end of it. When I heard that truck, I rolled. I knew I had to save me. And I, I know a lot of people, because I've been guilty of it myself, that they put everybody else in front of them, and they let themselves fall down the hill. You're so busy pushing the pack that you're just, man, you stuck at the bottom. They're using you as a counterweight to hold onto their rope to hop, climb up that mountain. So, you know, at the end of the day, that's really what I took away. As bad as it sounds, is you just, you got to do things for you, and you got to put you first. You know, your your safety, your well-being, mentally, physically, spiritually, that's for you. If it wasn't for us nasty old truck drivers out here on the road, you wouldn't have none of y'all shit. This video was brought to you by a truck and a truck driver.